This is your WLAK Daily News Roundup for Lake Air, 107.5 FM and 1260 AM in Amory. Civic Media News, I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Governor Evers is asking the Wisconsin Supreme Court to reconsider the state's congressional maps after he changed Wisconsin's legislative boundaries this week. Evers drew those congressional maps himself, but now he argues he did so under circumstances that no longer apply. Republicans hold six of Wisconsin's eight U.S. House seats. Governor Evers says he has no plans to sign a Republican bill to spend tens of millions of dollars to address PFAS pollution. He says in a letter to lawmakers it puts too many enforcement limits on the State Natural Resources Board. The Senate passed the bill in November and the Assembly is set to pass it today. Republican U.S. Senate candidate Eric Hovde says he opposes abortion except in cases of rape, incest, or when the life of the mother is in danger. The Journal Sentinel reports Hovde's position has evolved since the last time he ran for Senate. In 2012, he told the Green Bay radio station he was totally opposed to abortion. Wisconsin will get $24 million from cigarette makers. As for payments, the companies missed between 2005 and 2007, stemming from another legal case. The money is going to the Wisconsin Medical Assistance Trust Fund. More Wisconsin farmers are taking the government up on incentives to try more sustainable practices. Mike Lavender is with the National Sustainable Agriculture Coalition. He says that was even before the USDA provided more incentives. So while this is, of course, accurate and really important to wrap our heads around, there's even newer data that we're getting from Inflation Reduction Act funding demand. The Inflation Reduction Act provided nearly $20 billion for popular conservation programs. The U.S. Department of Education is offering breaks on student loans. Cora Hume is with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. She says borrowers with non-federally held loans need to consolidate them into a direct consolidation loan by the end of April. Older borrowers are less likely to hold direct loans, which would already benefit from this pay count adjustment. And then those that do own direct loans, they're less likely to participate in this IDR program that caps their monthly payments. Hume says the savings has the potential to change lives. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now here's what you need to know closer to home. For WLAK News, I'm James Kelly. The Duluth community is calling on the city to do something about what they feel is an unsafe area on West Skyline Parkway. According to a Northern News Now report, the calls come following two fatal crashes along the road in the last month. One resident even sent a possible solution to the problem to the city council on Wednesday. The solution suggested that all traffic should turn right at the intersection of West Skyline and 14th Avenue West, with the left side of the road being reserved for pedestrians and cyclists. The Duluth Airport Authority has announced that their 2023 audit found over 500 customers were overcharged for parking fees. According to officials, about half a percent of the parking fees processed in 2023 were overcharged thanks to a calculation error. The miscalculations affected 505 customers, costing them over $7,600 extra dollars. The customers who were overcharged received a refund for the amount, and airport officials apologized and announced the problem has been fixed. Community Action Duluth is offering free tax help for low-income residents. According to a Fox 21 report, the tax site will offer free help for anyone with a household income of under $64,000 per year. The organization is aiming to help about 1,200 people complete their taxes this year. The tax site has three full-time employees and about 50 volunteers hoping to relieve the burden and stress of doing taxes while also teaching the people they help a few things so they can file their taxes on their own in the future. The Superior Fire Department made some history this week. According to officials, Tuesday marked the first time in the history of the department that an all-female firefighting crew served the community. The crew included Captain Susie Olson, who has been with the department for 22 years, and Abby Dolson and Brina Colquist, both new additions to the department. According to a Northern News Now report, Captain Olson was happy to work with the crew and hopes it inspires young girls to pursue firefighting. The search for an 86-year-old man in Pine County who had been missing since January has been called off. According to the Pine County Sheriff's Office, search crews found the remains of Gerald Knapp on Tuesday morning with the help of drone search images in the Namaji State Forest. Knapp's car was found on February 1st, and over the weekend, his friends and family organized a large search party in hopes of finding him. Knapp lived with dementia and was reportedly going to his favorite diner when he went missing. 
Superior Mayor Jim Payne has announced a proposal to use his state and local fiscal recovery funds around the area. According to a Northern News Now report, Mayor Payne proposed using over $2.25 million for parks, public works, and improving downtown Superior. He also proposed using $1 million for street projects and $300,000 to rebuild the Heritage Skate Park. He says his goal is to spend the rest of that funding by the end of the year to give the city a new and improved look. The Superior City Council held discussions regarding the future of the Royalton Manor apartment complex on Tuesday. According to a Northern News Now report, tenants of the property are concerned that a change in ownership could change their qualifications to stay in the complex. Ownership of the assisted living building is being transferred to DRE Incorporated, and officials from the organization assured residents they will work to not displace people. Residents were also concerned about the renovation of the complex. A man was killed after being hit by a vehicle in Duluth on Tuesday afternoon. According to law enforcement authorities, the accident occurred around 3.20 on Tuesday afternoon near West Skyline Parkway and West 5th Street. A police official say the man was walking when he was hit by a car traveling west. He was taken to a local hospital where he later died from his injuries. Officials also say the driver of the car showed no signs of impairment and the identification of the victim is pending family notification. And that's what you need to know. For WLAK News, I'm James Kelly. It is going to be sunny and mild again today. Our high right around 50 this afternoon with wind out of the west at 5 to 15. Tonight, partly cloudy, 27. Friday, sunny and quite a bit cooler with a high of only 32. But we'll bounce back quickly Saturday with sunshine at a high right around 43. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Outside now, it's 33. The Sheriff is back. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with Sports. The Sheriff, pitcher Brandon Woodruff, signed a two-year deal to return to the Brewers. Was his agent receiving offers from other teams? Yes, there was quite a few teams that were, were in it to the end. And yeah, I was I was close to signing there at the end. And then the Brewers came in right at the last second. It's kind of how it happened. And But yeah, I, I mean, there was, there was interest from a lot of other clubs. College basketball, number seventh ranked Marquette, defeating DePaul by 34 points, 105 to 71. Tyler Kolick setting a new Marquette record with 18 assists, surpassing Tony Miller and Doc Rivers. Um, you know, that's just the nature of our team is, is to really share the ball and get each other involved. We cut, we pass, we move. Just to show our team as a whole, as a collective, is always unselfish. Head coach Shock is smart. I mean, you could tell by watching Tyler play tonight and you know, up there, Tony Miller, 17, Doc Rivers, 16. You know, those are guys that have been in the record books for a long, long time. NFL, Matt LaFleur introducing Jeff Halfley today as the Packers' new defensive coordinator, replacing Joe Barry, who's now a linebacker's coach with the Miami Dolphins. The Chicago Bears hiring 39-year-old Jennifer King as an assistant running backs coach. She's the first female coach ever hired by the Bears. King was on the Washington Commanders coaching staff last year. With sports, I'm Mike Clemens. I'm Pete with the 62nd Showbiz Beat. The 30th anniversary of the film Schindler's List is upon us. Despite the fact that the film won seven Oscars, Steven Spielberg told the New York Post the film took a deep emotional toll on him. How did he get through it? Spielberg says his old pal Robin Williams would call him once a week and do comedy over the phone, sometimes for 10 to 20 minutes and wouldn't stop until he heard a big laugh from the director. Then Williams would just hang up. Laughter truly is the best medicine. Let's remember that, kids. Yahoo Entertainment says the daughter of legendary singer James Brown, Deanna Brown Thomas, was fired twice by her father. The godfather of Soul's daughter says her dad was demanding, but that she learned more while curling her dad's hair and listening to him do business on the phone than she ever could have in college. Deanna Brown Thomas appears in the A&E documentary, James Brown, Say It Loud. Is Jimmy Kimmel Live coming to an end? The host of the show, Jimmy Kimmel, ironically enough, alluded to a possible end in sight. The New York Post reports Kimmel believes this could be his final contract for the late night talk show. The 56-year-old host's current contract ends in two years, and Kimmel says that might be enough. Kimmel is set to host this year's Oscars on March 10th. It's time for one of Pete's reluctant picks. Yes, reluctant. True Detective Night Country, the fourth season of the show, overall is a good watch. The show is set in the ominous and creepy setting of Alaska during 24 hours of darkness. The filmmakers blend the supernatural with good performances from the cast, which includes Jodie Foster. Warning, do not space out for a minute or you will have to go back and watch the entire thing again. Don't you hate when shows challenge you to the point where you can't play video poker on your phone and follow the plot at the same time?
Lady Gaga is now Lady Gamer. In 2019, Lady G asked her followers on Twitter, formerly known as Twitter, what Fortnite was. She was surprised to hear back from an expert. Ninja, a gamer who plays Fortnite while millions watch, reached out to her and offered to teach her all things Fortnite. She apparently liked what she heard because now she has a Fortnite character in her image. Is it just me or is the weirdest part about that story that millions watch someone else play video games? The Writers Guild of America announced their nominees for Best Original Screenplay, and they are Air, Barbie, The Holdovers, May, December, and Past Lives. In the Best Adapted Screenplay category, the nominees include American Fiction, Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret, Killers of the Flower Moon, and Oppenheimer. This year, the WGA Awards will be held April 14th. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba, every night between 7 and 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. That's your WLAK Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at lakeair.radio.